Congress is the single largest collection of procrastinators I've ever seen, and it has been for a long time. Seriously. You can find people griping about problems which the country faces. You can also find people who gripe about the specific problems of specific districts. But only in Congress can you find people who keep griping about the same problems for years at a time without actually solving them. And why? Well, I'll tell you, and don't expect any attempt to see both sides of the problem. It's not called for this time, and it's time for some roasted opinions. The Constitution set up Congress as the supreme legislative body in the United States. That means that they are supposed to identify problems and pass laws to address those problems. They also pass funding bills necessary to pay for the agencies established by those laws to address the problems. That is a lot of power. An individual member of Congress might not be that powerful, but collectively the 100 senators and 435 representatives are co-equal with the nine members of the Supreme Court and the President of the United States. That collective power is great enough that many of the provisions of the Bill of Rights were chosen specifically to limit the power of Congress. Yet what we get today from Congress is a never-ending stream of public appearances, press junkets, fairly funded pseudo-campaign appearances, and sound bites for the network news. See, the House of Representatives only serves a two-year term and a third of the Senate is up for election every two years. That means that the first project every member of Congress starts to work on is their re-election campaign. Why? Because two years go by really, really fast, and if the members wait until they've worked for a year before they start fundraising, then they are so far behind the funding curve that they can never catch up. So Congress is perpetually in re-election mode, especially the House of Representatives. Now think about it. If you are hired to do a job on a two-year contract and your first priority is to get a contract extension, then how much time are you spending on that extension instead of, you know, doing the job you were hired to do? Of course, there will be an opportunity in a country which protects free speech, including symbolic speech like donating money, to shortcut the waiting line to speak with a representative by donating to their campaign. Bingo, we have lobbyists in Washington, D.C. They were named not because they hung out in the lobby of the White House, folks, but because they linger in the lobbies of the two houses of Congress. They buy time with our representatives, buy support for their ideas, and help to craft loopholes in the legal code which allow special interest groups to get away with what no one else in America can. The national debt is skyrocketing, yet every time that someone mentions cutting some spending, it's suddenly the end of life as we know it. We spend more than a trillion dollars in excess of revenues, and yet subsidy payments for agricultural overproduction cannot be cut? Funding for oversight offices to oversee the oversight offices who oversee the special offices which treat a minor problem as if it's about to bring down the whole of society and the economy with it cannot be trimmed. We can't fund programs that are needed, like health care for the 9-11 responders, without it being a big fight. But we can fund these other programs. It's a simple principle, people. You can't go out to dinner and a movie every single night when you don't earn much more than what you need to pay the basic bills. And you have to pay those basic bills first before you start spending on extravagances. Even if you borrow the money, eventually someone wants their money back. What's more likely is that the person to whom you owe money will start asking you for favors. And yet, with all of that spending, Congress cannot seem to address real problems. The president points out that the border is in crisis, with not enough funding for facilities and immigration courts to process the immigrants we already have in the country, and that with more pouring in every day. Funny. This is what Congress and President Obama said eight years ago. And yet the only action that most of Congress wants to do is scream about how racist the president is against immigrants. Trump follows up by highlighting the sickening state of some neighborhoods in major cities, something which should appeal directly to those members who represent those districts and open the door for them to ask for federal funding. That should really encourage those representatives. Federal funding to address real problems and provide real solutions 
which measures they can then tell their constituents in those neighborhoods they sponsored and virtually guarantee their re-election for solving those problems. What do they do instead? Scream even more about how racist the president is. In other words, they pontificate, posture, point the finger at the president, and do nothing useful. Again, Congress is too busy arguing with each other and posturing for the next election, or at least attempting to relitigate the results of the last election to actually do a thing that would identify and address real problems for Americans. I can only conclude it's because too many members of Congress don't care. And by don't care, I mean not even a little bit. They don't care about the problems at all. They care about looking good, raising funds, and getting reelected. Too many of them think that a never-ending chorus of Trump's a racist, Trump's a sexist, Trump's out of touch with the needs of real Americans is resonating with those real Americans. You know, the swing voters? We lived through the Great Recession. The economy crashed. The markets slowly recovered from that recession, but we all listened to many, many reports of a jobless recovery. Trump promises on the campaign trail to bring back jobs, takes office, and the slow rate of recovery in the job market speeds up. People who fled the labor market have re-entered that market because there are jobs available again. Meanwhile, the stock markets boomed, manufacturing boomed, sales boomed, the economy roared back towards health, and all we heard is how fragile it is, how the next recession is just around the corner, because the president told the rest of the world that the U.S. was not going to accept unequal trade deals any longer. Congress just keeps on trying to distract us with never-ending investigations into the president's campaign, and hops on Twitter to feed the activists with more statements against Trump's so-called racism and sexism. Congress members are too busy going on MSNBC, CNN, and Fox News to broadcast how bad the president is to show up and do their jobs. They won't shut up about the oversight function of the U.S. Congress, but all that they are doing is standing by, watching other people work, and pointing out everything that's being done wrong because the president is a bad man. Instead of passing legislation, they are suing the president in the federal courts for acting when they won't. That's right, that co-equal legislative branch slowed down the president's policy measures by appealing to the third co-equal branch, as if they didn't have the ability to simply pass laws which revoked those executive orders. There are only two solutions, one which belongs to Congress alone and one which belongs to the rest of America. Either Congress gets off their collective butts, stops trying to litigate the government of the country in the court of public opinion, and gets busy addressing those real issues that we face, or we the people need to vote them out of office. Every last one of them, if that's what it takes. As for the members of Congress, I say this. If you idiots want to get those contract extensions next election, get rid of the useless programs and corporate special interest funding and balance the federal budget. Pay off that national debt, which I've been listening to every Congress since the 1980s complain about. When you do spend money on problems, let those problems be cleaning up the piles of trash and human freaking feces off the streets in our cities. Let them be funding the health care for those who put their lives on the line and ruined their future health in order to help others. Don't just bitch about climate change if you think that's the real problem. Do something about it. Sponsor a bill to fund the planting of trees to offset the carbon. Sponsor bills to develop a national solid waste recovery system which picks up garbage in the way it's always been picked up, but sorts it and repurposes everything with the least bit of recycling potential so that we can reduce landfill usage to a tiny fraction and we can make better use of the limited resources we have. Support the efforts of the president to get the national economy on stronger footing and build better trade deals with the rest of the world. Or, you know, don't. We could use some news people in Congress anyway. Maybe even some people who will introduce a constitutional amendment to restructure House terms to a four-year length and institute term limits. Wouldn't that be something?